Our first episode, the adventure begins. It begins in a yard with a whole lot of work that we need to do to the boat. And what we're going to be doing is writing a series of questions for each episode. So what do I do? Open this? Yep. Okay, so Sal's given me these questions which are to prompt me into saying interesting things about our trip to Tasmania. And it says, you'd look hot on my yacht. I'm not sure that's gonna make it into the video. Okay, question one. So who are you, where are you, and what are you doing? Um, I'm Mark Chu. I'm sitting on top of our boat, Fairwinds, 1956, Philip Rose Design, Ab King Rasmussen, ex yawl now sloop, in the yard at Royal Yacht Club of Victoria in Williamstown, and we're preparing the boat to head south to Tasmania for the summer with the culmination at the Wooden Boat Festival the second week of February. Okay, question number one. What are the hardest compromises to make in cruising in a 29-foot waterline classic yacht? Oh, where do I begin? <laughs> I think something that you said to me which is really important and I always keep in my mind is that the best boat to go sailing on is the boat that you have. And we love Fairwinds. Um, and this trip is actually a little bit of a test to see if long-term cruising is going to be part of our future. It's very much been part of our past. We've spent two years living on a boat, different boats, um, a long time ago, and now this is part of our future. I guess the biggest difficult thing for me is that we love, we're very social, we love having people to stay, um, and that's, that is difficult on this boat, obviously. 29 foot, um, one cabin, one head. Um, but you know, we'll make that work. I think the hardest compromise for me is no hot water. That's, that's, that's hard. I've got a lot of hair. Being able to wash my hair is a bit of a luxury. What makes you a lover of adventure? Um, well, I don't know, sort of living a suburban life is rather easy and unchallenging sometimes. Well, not always easy, but um, I think uh, the challenges of doing something difficult and something with a small degree of risk and a small amount of opportunity for things to go wrong adds a certain excitement and frisson to life. So maybe that's why we adventure. Question number two. Tell me a moment you're most looking forward to once we get down to Southern Tassie. Well, I really, really want to go around to Port Davey. I've never heard, I've never been to Port Davey. Um, we have walked, done the South Coast Track walk where we flew in to Melaleuca and then walked out. But to be in Port Davey, I want to climb Mount Rugby. I want to be down there at Cray Pot in, I want crayfish in Port Davey and to climb Mount Rugby. They're my three things. Arrival or journey discuss. Um, definitely the journey. It's not really about the arrival, it's the journey. It's the journey from right now, from hanging on a sander under the boat yesterday for six hours, getting the anti foul off and into my lungs and all that sort of thing. Um, that's all part of the journey and really just experiencing it day to day. I mean, if it was just the destination, you'd just get on an aeroplane, it'd be so much easier. So it says here, if it's about the journey, how do you know when you arrive? Well, you never arrive. If you arrive, then you're done. So, I mean, everything's just part of the journey. 
there's good bits of the journey and bad bits of the journey, but there's no arrival really. I mean, even when you get to the Wooden Boat Festival in Hobart, then you've got to get the boat back and then you've got to think of the next thing. So really it is just experiencing it day to day, not looking for some amazing sort of uh, amazing shining sunset to sail off into. So what am I looking forward to most? Well, I mean, you have these little visions, these snippets of things in your head, like waking up down at the south end of Bruny Island, crystal clear water, sort of 10 feet deep, and you can see the anchor lying in the sand. You can see the crabs crawling along the bottom, and you can dive off the boat. Even though it might be a bit chilly, but it refreshes after maybe having a glass of wine or two the night before. And then not really having to do a whole lot. I feel like the days are very much full at the moment. I'm looking forward to some days that aren't quite so full. Who will we invite along the way? Well, I mean, Fairwind's crew is a fairly integral part of, uh, part of, part of the boat's sort of journey. So it's such a great bunch of people and families and the wider, the wider group of Fairwinds um, is, is a real community. Plus we may have a visitor or two coming over from the UK to spend, spend a, a little bit of a while with us, um, which on a 29 foot waterline boat is always interesting because um, there's not a lot of room inside. When people say it's a 43 foot boat, I think they're thinking of a 43 foot Beneteau. It's not like that. It's, um, it's really the space of a 30-foot modern boat, um, but those are sort of part of the part of the joys of owning a classic yacht. Okay. Question number three has two points. Question number three: A, one item that's least favourite aboard Fairwinds, the toilet. It's called the heads. Uh, we have a pump. You have promised me you're going to, you're, I won't go on this trip if that handle for that pump is not changed. At the moment, and that's a pretty weird angle, at the moment the only way I can pump that fucking thing is to pour a cup of olive oil or some kind of lubricant into the, into the bowl and then, uh, and the other thing that really drives me crazy is when people don't flick it across. Because when you're a lady and when you sit down, if there's water has risen completely to the top and it, it does it with such stealth, but so incredible. It just rises and it's completely perfect. And I hate that. I hate it when you sit down and you get a, a wet bum first thing in the morning. Um, what's the most favorite? That corner over there, that corner is known as assuming the position. And when I get two cushions in that corner and my book, and a beautiful sunset and I say to Mark go and get me 10 oysters and we have a glass of wine and 10 oysters and my book in that corner life's pretty good that's my most favorite part about Fairway <laughs>
So it's nine winches to service, so that's a fairly decent job. So hopefully this vane will allow us to steer downwind, uh, well allow the boat to steer itself downwind. At the moment we can steer anything from a reach to sort of beating. We can generally get the boat balanced and steering itself, um, but downwind we've got no chance. So what this means is we should be able to not have to rely on having four or five crew all the time when we're doing passages. Um, the alternative was to fit in a, uh, an electronic powered auto helm down here, but sort of then the issues of uh, you know battery storage and, and that sort of thing come to mind. So I'm thinking um, I generally like sort of manual or mechanical things rather than electronic things. So I'm hoping this is going to be a nice solution to our self-steering problems, but um, we'll tell you more about that when it arrives. So at the weekend, I stripped everything out of here, or almost everything, all the junk came out of it. Piles and piles of junk, just left on a few essential things, um, because we're gonna give it a massive great clean out and a little bit of painting and things like that. I mean, as you can see, there's not a lot of room. Step there. back yeah. for me. Yep. There's not a lot of room. We've only got the saloon here and then the forepeak. So when we're at sea, it's really only from here backwards that we can use. So this is our sort of living area. And when we're aboard, we've got um, two settee berths with lay cloths when we're at sea, and one up here, which folds out. So that's probably the most comfortable bunk of all, because you're nice and secure in there. And then we have what we call the coffin here, which is hard to get into and hard to get out of, but once you're in there, you're nice and snug. And that goes right up the back. And then behind the camera, there's the four peak, which we can really only use when we're in an anchorage, but it's a lovely berth when you are in an anchorage. The dreaded, oh my God, look at that. That's gonna need a clean, people. Yeah, it will. Don't worry, everything needs a clean. The galley, here's the galley. We've got seawater, fresh water, force tan stove, what we call the dump locker, tea and coffee locker, condiments locker cups up here, most important thing on a boat, kitchen paper goes here. So we really hope that you look forward to these videos. Um, I really hope that we can get everything done that we need to do. As Mark said, there's only eight weeks before this boat heads off and looking around there's a fair bit of work to be done so come on this journey with us um, and we look forward to sharing it with you